what's new in IFRS 17 and are you ready for it? IFRS 17 applies to insurance contracts that an entity issues, all reinsurance contracts, that is those an entity issues and holds, and investment contracts with discretionary participation features provided that the entity also issues insurance contracts. For starters, with the new standard, insurance contracts profits cannot be booked on day one. Currently, insurers recognize profits inconsistently over time, which can vary significantly. Some insurers recognize this profit immediately at the start of an insurance contract. Some recognize it when the contract terminates and some recognize it over the duration of the contract. Under IFRS 17, Profit is measured at start as the expected profit to be earned as services are fulfilled. It is adjusted for changes in variables affecting future coverage cash flows. It accretes interest based on day one discount rates. It limits the ability to off offset onerous contracts against profitable ones. IFRS 17 introduces standardization in level of aggregations of gains and losses. Insurers would need to identify groups of onerous contracts as soon as possible, rather than obscure them by offsetting the losses with profitable contracts. IFRS 17 will thus help create consistency in profit recognition within the industry as the concept of offsetting is completely eliminated. Revenue represents reduction of the liabilities held as the entity provides insurance services. How do we calculate this reduction in liabilities? That's through contractual service margins. To establish some standardization, IFRS requires a calculation of contractual service margins. The CSM can only be recognized in the profit or loss statement gradually as and when insurance services are provided. CSM represents the expected amounts of profits that have not yet been earned under the group of contracts in question. This approach will help define clear and consistent rules that will increase the comparability of financial statements. Then the next point, reinsurance is calculated separately. A reinsurance contract is a type of insurance contract that is issued by an entity to compensate another entity, the cedent, for claims arising from insurance contracts issued by the cedent. IFRS 17 requires a reinsurance contract to be accounted for separately from its related underlying insurance contract. That is because when an entity that holds a reinsurance contract, it cannot reduce the amount it owes to the underlying policy holder by the amounts it expects to receive from the reinsurer. Change in value of market variables may go through PNL or OCI, that is other comprehensive income. Let us dig a bit deeper into this. Insurers would need to choose accounting policies for both assets and liabilities based on whether to report the insurance contract in the PNL based on changes in market discount rates or directly as equity through other comprehensive income. For this, they would need to take into account their balance sheet management strategies and how the asset is treated under IFRS 9. This will impact the volatility of their income statements and net asset positions. Granularity of disclosures. IFRS 17 reporting will need a change in chart of accounts of the general ledger to produce new financial information that includes extensive disclosures, which are more granular than what is currently required. Reconciliations of data must be performed at the most granular level across insurance and reinsurance contracts. Gathering, disaggregating, 
and managing this data can be challenging in large businesses and will take a considerable amount of time. Separation of components is required only if distinct. And this means that IFRS 17 narrows down the separation of insurance contracts based on clear distinctions only, but also ensures a single approach for insurance components such as recognition of revenue, profit margin, costs, insurance contracts, liabilities, etc. Under IFRS 17, a company shall need to identify portfolio of contracts and group them under different divisions. Further, it requires separation of non-insurance components from the insurance contracts such as embedded derivatives, distinct investment components, or non-insurance goods or services. IFRS 4 versus IFRS 17. IFRS 4 has different accounting policies per insurance contract, while IFRS 17 encourages uniformity for similar groups of insurance contracts. IFRS 17 requires insurers to recognize, uh, 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 in fact, to organize uh, insurance contracts into groups according to three criteria. That is product portfolio, degree of profitability, and year of issue. Product portfolio means contracts subject to the same risk type and managed together as a single pool. Contracts also must be classified into groups according to the degree of profitability at initial recognition using criteria like contracts that are onerous at initial recognition, contracts that have no significant possibility of become on, becoming onerous subsequently, and all other remaining contracts. IFRS 17 requires separate reporting of onerous groups from the profitable groups, which impacts when the entity must reveal these onerous groups and their total liability. If the onerous groups were, are not separated in this manner, then you can imagine a downward trend would likely not emerge so quickly. Groups of contracts must be further split, uh, split into cohorts consisting of periods of one year or less. With IFRS 4, insurance businesses tend to follow their own reporting rules, creating uh, business comparison challenges, while IFRS 4, 17 uh, provides easy comparison with other insurance companies. With IFRS 17, Reporting differences in profitability among insurance contracts provide important information about the sustainability and future profitability of a company. This information will significantly improve the transparency of reporting for insurance contracts and provide important additional information for investors and other users of financial statements for their decision making. It also makes it easier for a comparison with other businesses. Key drivers of profit are not visible under IFRS 4, while IFRS 17 provides transparent profit drivers. IFRS 17 is expected to make the source of revenue and profitability transparent. At present, some companies recognize deposits received from customers also as revenue. Under the new standard, amount received as deposits will be recognized as a liability on the balance sheet. The new standard distinguishes the two key sources of revenue and profitability from insurance contracts, that is profit earned from providing insurance coverage and investment results from managing financial assets. In IFRS 4, Discount rates are based on investment and are set at the inception level, while under IFRS 17, estimates are updated at each reporting period and reflect characteristics of the cash flows of the contract and also the time value of money during that period. Here's a calculation example. 
IFRS 17 introduces an approach that tackles some of the challenges in accounting for insurance contracts. Insurance contracts often cover uh, difficult to measure long-term uh, and complex risk with uncertain outcomes. They are not typically traded in the market and may include a significant deposit component. That is the amount the insurer is obligated to pay the policyholder regardless of whether the event occurs or not. IFRS 17 requires the insurer to report them on the balance sheet as the total of fulfillment cash flows and the contractual service margin, which means that the expected profit for providing future insurance coverage, that is unearned profit. IFRS 17 requires a company to update the fulfillment cash flows at each reporting date using current marketing esti uh, market estimates. Consequences of not implementing or delaying IFRS 17. The risks are many, amongst which are organizations will risk non-compliance, since investors base their as, uh, assessment on balance sheet uh, financials, a compliant organization will be more transparent and certainly attract more investors. Legal agreements like credit agreements, lending covenants, or investment agreements, reinsurance agreements could be impacted or rendered void if insurers are non-compliant. It could also impact the ability of an organization to source credits in the market. These being the new standards, there are very few experts in the market to guide you on data management and such experts will get busier as deadlines approach. Late starters will have uh, high operating costs as they try to uh, do shortcut approaches uh, trying to meet the standards rather than going through an organization change. Uh, insurers need to make the most of the extra year as uh, timelines are still very tight. Is your organization ready for the IFRS 17? January 2023 uh, seems like a long time to get ready, but it really isn't. The time to act is now. IFRS 17 will mean substantial changes for finance and accounting. The financial statements under IFRS 17 will be different and will require new steps for data analysis and reconciliation due to detailed di disclosure requirements. It means changes for actuarial departments also, primarily due to the demand for more detailed data and more frequent actuarial system runs. The complexity and sophistication of actuarial models will increase significantly IFRS, uh, after IFRS 17 adoption, while existing models will require serious revisions. The selected method will impact the costs of adoption and financial performance of the company, and hence will require a significant amount of reclassification of the data and financials. A special focus is needed on interdepartmental collaboration, particularly between financial and actuarial functions. To apply the new standard, Many companies will need to have more information at their disposal, disposal as they currently possess. Adopting the new standard may require significant resources and changes to the company's business processes, uh, also data and IT systems. Because it requires consolidation and reporting with far more data in compressed time frames. And it also requires organizations to provide governance and transparency of their data in their reports. This is very complicated. Since insurers need to get used to running the business according to new metrics and KPIs, a transition period is quite recommended. Uh, banded fixes and temporary workarounds may not work.